Hey guys, in this first part of creating a head turn, we take a look at how to control the eyes with a smart bone. Alright, the advanced head turn tutorial in Anime Studio, a long requested tutorial since we posted the other head turn tutorial a few weeks ago. Now, before we get started, this tutorial is actually split into three parts. You're seeing part one right now. You can get links to the other two parts right here. I'll post the annotations, and I'll also post those annotations again at the end of this video so you can seamlessly transition from one to the next and you can continue to build your head turn. So with that said, let's get started. Okay, so first we'll need a head facing the screen, and you can see that we have a bone layer for this head. Now the bone layer itself is actually masked along with the mouth and the eyes. Now if you are unsure as to how to mask, you can refer to some tutorials we did a few weeks ago. We can also do a tutorial later on on how to construct a character with these masks if that's something you desire. However, one thing to keep in mind is if you do a mask within a mask like we have here with the bone layer and the mouth and the eyes, when you are working on your workspace within Anime Studio and you start to move things around like for instance if we move the mouth past the head you can see the mouth is still there or a better example is if you take the eyes and move them you can see that we still have the eyes poking out now if you use control R or command R to render the frame you can see what is actually going on right now what the audience will eventually see. And you can see that that eye and the mouth are definitely masked. So just keep that in mind and I would test that before you get started just to make sure that everything is being masked. Now what we'll need to do is create three bones. So we'll start here, we'll draw a bone up on the left and then go down there and draw another one going up and then on the right side draw a bigger one going up as well. Now we can turn the influences off with your bone strength tool and then we can take the reparent tool and we just want to click on these bones and we want to make sure they're not linked to anything. So you can just click on a bone and then click on the workspace to make sure it's not linked to anything. And then we can highlight all three bones and go to bone constraints and we'll turn those angle constraints on and we can reduce this to about negative 50 and 50. That way all the bones now have constraints and they can act as dials. So we'll now label the bones. The first will be EL, the second will be M, and then the third will be HT. So eyelids, mouth, and head turn is what each of these will be standing for. We can also to make things easier, color code the bones. So we'll just select a bone with the select bone tool, then go up to that drop down menu and choose a color. It doesn't really matter what, just so that they're different so that you can um, easily refer to them. Now hit Control K or Command K if you're on a Mac to bring up your actions panel. And what we'll do now is we can test these bones just to make sure everything is in working order. But what we can do is create our first action and if you're used to smart actions at all this will be familiar we're gonna focus on the eyes first and we will name this action EL for eyelids so that we can then link this action to that smart dial so once you type that name in you can click OK so now we are in the EL action on frame 1 we're going to move the dial to the left and we're going to come in here now and create an extreme for this eyelid. So by using Alt and then right clicking you can select your eye without having to dig into all those layers. That's kind of up to you, just a shortcut. And we're going to take the select points tool and highlight the top points of those eyes and just bring it down like so so it looks like his eyes are closed. And 
you can go to the bottom as well, those bottom two points. Make sure you select, it can be kind of tricky here. And we can then bring those up a little bit just to get those eyes closed. So now, if we go back out to the main timeline by double clicking on main line, and we go to the bone layer and take the manipulate bones tool and go to the left, you can see that the eyes are closing. So that's uh, pretty cool, pretty simple. We can create a second action for this to make the other extreme if we want. So we'll do this EL2. Again, if you do further actions for an action, you always want to number them, two, three, four, and so on. And we will select the eyes and we'll come in here and we're just going to hold and shift as we select these points and then use the scale points tool to expand upward just like that. So now go back out here to the main line and we can use the manipulate bones tool again here once we're on the bone layer and we can move this to the right and we can see now that the eyes widen so they go from close to wide and that is what we want. Now the eyelids themselves can have some adjusting here. Since the eyes are closed, we can come in here back to EL, go into the layer here for the eye details, and we can just kind of move things up a little bit with the translate points tool. Since the eyes are closed, we can just kind of move these points more in towards where the eye was shut, just like this, and it can be very slight. The uh, the big one will come when we do the eyes widen. That's where we'll have to do more adjusting. So let's double click on EL2 for the widened eyes. And we can select some points here for the bottom lids. And we can select both lids if we want just for this to be symmetrical. And we can come in here for the top eyelids as well. And we can move those up. And then from here, you can then come in with your translate points tool and just do some manual adjustments if you want. If you want for variation or if you just want, you know, to fine tune things, that's what you'll need to do. Now come back out here to the main line and once again we can test this out. Make sure we have our guides on here. Go back to the bone layer, select the manipulate bones tool. They shut, they open and you can see that the eyelids also react to the eyes shutting and opening as well, which is what we need. And again, you might be thinking, well, why should we be doing eyes for a head turn? Well, again, it'll all make sense in the end. I think you'll see that the eyes really do add to the head turn animation. So anyway, that wraps up this portion of this lesson. If you'd like to see part two and three, you can click on the annotations right now on the screen to view those. If you'd like more tutorials in general, please subscribe or check out IncredibleTutorials.com. We are also on Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.